Welcome to Daily Armor. Today I'm going to be in the book of Exodus chapter 33, looking at verses 12 through 17 and then backing up and looking at a few verses at the beginning of the chapter. Um, I'm still kind of pondering on the Lord's promises and um, as I feel like the Lord has gave me a personal promise um, just Wednesday night during the message. Um, during Wednesday, um, I got, you know, some um, some different scenarios that had presented themselves. And my first inkling was, Lord, how can I do this? Is this really what you want me to do? And how can I do this? This is going to, this is going to be harder. And this is going to be, you know, I'm not going to have hardly any breaks at all. And, and, you know, I was just foreseeing, you know, just quietly in my thoughts, just foreseeing some, some problems, some difficulties, some issues, and just kind of pondering on those things and asking, Lord, is this what you want? You know, is this what you want me to do? And, and as I was pondering on that, then, you know, it's, it's Wednesday, it's time to go to church. I have no idea what my pastor is going to preach, even though he's my husband, I have no clue. Um, and, you know, we get to service and there's always something there for me. And it, when you get to go, there's always something there for you. And he preached out of Exodus chapter 33. And as he did, um, there was just a verse that stood out to me so profoundly. It was verse number 14. And immediately I felt like that he was speaking to me in that verse 14. And a song came to mind that he gave me over 15 years ago as we were leaving North Carolina and moving to Florida. And I, I was, it was, it was just like shocking and confusing and I couldn't understand it. It seemed like it was the worst time. Um, and it was going to be so horrible, but the Lord said, I'll go with you. That's a promise he gave to me. I'll go with you. And then as I was just, just thinking, Lord, is this really what you want? Is this really what you're wanting me to do? And, and, and I wasn't saying I wouldn't, I wasn't, I was just asking. I just was like, you know, before something I've learned, um, and I don't have it done perfectly is I'm, I kind of pause and before I commit to something, I pause and I ask, Lord, is this what you want me to do? And even though I could foresee some, some problems and some issues, um, I, I didn't know, I don't just assume that it's not for me to do because it's inconvenient to me, um, or that I see problems and issues that it's going to bring and that I don't really feel capable of handling it but I will stop and ask the Lord. And so that's kind of what I was doing that afternoon. And then when he, when the Lord had my pastor to read that verse 14 and I was, I was looking at it in my Bible, it was as if God himself was saying, I'll go with you and I will give you rest. Let's look, let's go ahead and read 12 through 17 and then I'm going to back up to verse 14 and then I'll back up to uh, why Moses had to ask for God's presence in the begin to begin with. Um, so let's read verses 12 through 17. And it says, And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou, see thou say, but sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me uh, know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Moses is, is he's, he's got some questions. Now, therefore, I pray thee, and he ask, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with me. Moses asked for it. Moses asked for the Lord. And we'll explain why in just a few minutes. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. He's like, Lord, if you're not going, I don't want to go. Please don't, please don't ask us to go if you're not going to go. For wherein shall, wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? He said, the only way we're going to know that you found, that we have found grace, that this is actually true, is that you're with us. How is this going to, it's going, we're going to perceive this incorrectly, Lord. We need you and we need you to be there with us. We need you to be right there alongside with us. 
is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated? He's like, Lord, please don't separate us with you. I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. God had already told Moses that he had, that he had found grace in his sight and that he knows him by name. They have a personal relationship. I have a personal relationship with, with God through Jesus Christ. That is my only way. That is my only access. But I have it. He's mine. I belong to him. I've been bought with a price, that precious blood of Jesus. Um, but why is Moses having to ask this anyway? Well, let's look back up here at verse number one. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the, and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, and to the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, the Jebusite, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Oh my goodness, so what's happened? The people have made a, a, a golden calf while Moses was on the mountain um, with the Lord and was gone for like 40 days. And comes back and and the people have taken their jewelry, taken their things. They have, have broken it down and they have created a golden calf. And they are praying to this golden calf. And the Lord is disgusted. The Lord is absolutely disgusted. He gets disgusted with you and I sometimes. We mess up. I Just thinking back this morning at how that I, if I could go back. 15 years ago when we were moving down here and I was doing it out of obedience. I obediently came, but I did not handle it well at all. And even, even looking back and seeing that there was an opportunity that God presented within, within a week or two of being here, that was an opportunity for my children to go to us a good school. And I did not see it at the time. Why? Because I was looking at my finances and I looked at what their the cost at the school was and I was like we can't afford that they were at Christian school and that was one of those things that I was I was so upset about I'm like Lord you're 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 having us take them out of a wonderful school and 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 now we're coming here and and I don't I just don't understand and there was a school that my kids could have went to there was a school that, that used King James Bible. There was a school that, that, that it was the curriculum that my kids used and a good place that my kids could have been. And you know what? I messed up. I messed up. All I saw was that the numbers were not going to add up. All I saw was the obstacle and that I was, uh, that I assumed that because the numbers didn't match up, I assume because this it was like a diagnosis that was that was um, absolutely impossible that I didn't even ask. Moses asked after God has already said, "I'm not going to go with you because of the stiff-necked people, because of what they've done, and they have disgusted me, lest I destroy them." And I'll say that I would rather have fell flat on my face, been destroyed than to have missed an opportunity. And God had already told me he was going to go with me and be with me and that he was going to help us all along the way. And yet I missed an opportunity. I missed seeing that this that was presented itself. Um, I was so busy being, um, being angry and, and looking at the, looking at the reports, looking at the, the, looking at the numbers that I couldn't see past the numbers that mean nothing to the Lord. That meant nothing to him. And yet I am still kicking myself because my kids could have had a much, much better education. Um, there was um, music that, you know, teachers that could have furthered. Uh, Hayden was taken away from his piano lessons and he could have just picked up there and moved forward. And I missed it. And I caused harm to my children and I didn't mean to and I didn't want to. And I was a stiff necked person. I was so stiff-necked. I could not see past the obstacles. That's what the people did. They couldn't see past that Moses wasn't there 
oh, they started imagining, well, Moses must be dead. We're on our own. We're out here and we're on our own. And then they, they, they come up with a plan for themselves. And so many times I look back and I come up with my own plan and I am so disgusted with myself. And that is not what God had planned for me. And I missed out on it because I was too busy looking at the, the things that it just wasn't lining up. It wasn't making sense. Yet he had told me, lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He's like, if you will turn to me, if you will turn to me, it doesn't matter what those, what it doesn't matter what your income is versus what your expenses are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to add up. It doesn't have to line up. I don't care what the diagnosis is or what the situation is or how big that enemy is or how many of them are surrounding you. I don't care. The Lord doesn't care. And I was looking at those things instead of looking at the Lord. And he had already given me a, he had already given me a promise. He's like, trust, trust me, Teresa, just trust me for every, everything every situation and as I was as I was stopping Wednesday and I was thinking Lord is this really what you want it just seems like it's going to be harder and more difficult and um you know I'm older and I'm weaker and I'm you know I'm trying to regain my health but I'm struggling and he's and he's like I already give you a promise that you're not to go forth in your own power but you're to go forth in the power of the Lord go in in God's power go in his power. He'd already given me that promise several months ago. And so this new information that I've been giving, which is given, which is just, you know, keep making things harder and harder, but yet I don't want to discount God's promises. And I don't want to make those same mistakes. I don't want to be stiff-necked anymore. I want to ask, Lord, go with me. Lord, go with me. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again soon.